Welcome to another real world review. This one on the Himaway Big Dog long range electric bicycle. This baby boasts an 80 mile range on a single charge. And generally you've seen in past videos, it's usually around half of that. I weigh 185 pounds, I'm six foot two. So depending on your weight, it can vary, but I'm hoping we get at least 40 miles out of this. So I'm gonna pop this out of the box, give you guys a few tips on assembling it. Then we'll do some real world testing and I'll give you my honest opinion on it. Let's go. Taking a peek through the box, we can see it came very well packaged, tons of padding on there, everything zip tied together. And despite having some, some box damage, there was no damage as I can see so far. And your delivery driver might be a little agitated with you because this weighs 103 pounds gross, 88 pounds net. However, this bike's rated for 400 pounds payload capacity. First tip for you, as you're cutting the foam off of everything, be extremely careful because I was using diagonal cutters and somehow snipped the wire going over to this control. And then I had to cut the little tiny wires and solder them back together. And that was a real pain in the butt. Uh, also on these zip ties, if you cut them in the right spot, you can keep them and reuse them in the future. So yeah, just be real careful because that was, geez, I hate even showing you guys that I did that. It's terrible. Here's a quick glance at everything in the box. You got the front fender, front wheel, a charger, which is 54.6 volts at 2.8 amps. By the way, this battery is 48 volts, 20 amp hours, a nice hefty battery. You got aluminum, high quality pedals, a hat, check that out. Go ahead and uh, try that on. Oh yeah, I like it. It's kind of uh, like a trucker hat style. <laughs> a front headlight with built-in reflector. It does have a tail light as well. The front axle, a tool for securing your pedals. Another tool that has all your Allen keys and uh, you know, screwdrivers. Oh, some sockets in there too. Very cool. The derailleur guard, owner's manual with all your instructions for how to put it together. Of course, I'll give you some tips. First thing I'm gonna do is take the keys from the handlebar, turn it right in here for the battery, and then you just flip this over. And look at that, the big berth of battery slides right out of there. Let's get this on charge. Uh, it does have an indicator right here. So well, RGB light, I guess you push that, it says it's green. As soon as I plugged it in, it has a fan that came on and we'll just wait for that red light to turn green and be fully charged. They do advertise this as a Samsung LG battery. So I'm not sure if it's just one or the other or both cells combined inside of there, but main brand cells. We can pull our seat up and lock that out. You just slide this lever over. Wow, that was perfectly adjusted too. If you have to get it a little bit tighter, you just loosen it and then spin this to change the tension. Like any other bicycle, and now I can slide this out. Once you pull it out of the box, just kick the center stand down and with the battery out, it balances itself perfectly. I'm sure some of you guys, your OCD is getting triggered with these hanging by the cables, but I can promise you it's not that heavy. You can't mix up the pedals since the right side's right hand threaded and the left side is lefty tighty. So spin that to the left to snug it down and then grab your 15 millimeter and tighten it. Nice and snug. They even print that on the arms for you. For the handlebars, remove all four four millimeter Allen bolts and then position this so it's forward. Bring your bars up carefully, making sure that the wires are all routed properly. Reinstall the cap. You'll want to run these down all evenly so we have even gaps on the top and the bottom of the clamp. Make sure the bars are centered this way and then don't fully snug them down yet. Leave them a little bit loose so we can position the bars later. To install the front wheel, you're going to take your axle with the thick spacer and slide it in on this side of the wheel. Slide that all the way through and then take the thinner spacer, put it right here, put the washer on, turn and turn the nut on maybe just a couple turns, same on the other side. Now we can take this spacer and hit it out of there with the mallet or your hand. And when you're sliding this on, make sure the brake rotor just goes in between the two brake pads. That went on with these should look just like this. You got the washer and nuts on the outside, the spacers on the inside, and even threads not more threads showing on one side or the other. Then you're gonna go ahead and push down on it to seat it and secure your nuts. The axle nut torque spec is 15 to 22 Newton meters, but before you go cranking on this, tightening it, make sure that it spins freely. Snug it down a little bit, still spins freely because you don't wanna destroy or hurt the bearings, but I'm just going good and tight on it. And then slide your axle nut caps on. Both the front fender and the front light get held on by this one single bolt, which by the way, all the hardware I've encountered so far has been stainless steel. It's really nice to see. 
stainless steel washers, bolt and nut. The instructions, hopefully you can see this okay, but they show it going on the front and I didn't really like that. Uh, so I went bolt with no washer, I put it behind and that way it kind of gives a little bit more stability sitting on this flat surface back here. Then thick washer, fender, thin washer and nut. Uh, and that, that worked out very well. On these rods though, the instructions kind of didn't specify if they want the rod in between here or on the outside. And in between makes most sense, but you're gonna, unless you put a spacer in there, uh, you're gonna get a little bit of rattle back and forth. So if that bothers you, just get the you know, stainless steel washers to put inside of there or put these on the outside. Uh, but then it kind of doesn't look very symmetrical and it's pushing these out. So that seems to be the best way. For the headlight and reflector adjustment, you just have a Phillips with an eight millimeter nut. I didn't even have to tweak mine. I was able to just move it and then plug it in right here. The derailleur guard, you just remove these two four millimeter Allens and go ahead and install that. At this point, we can do a final adjustment on the seat and position the bars. Once you have the bars set comfortably, snug down those four mils the rest of the way. And if you want any angle adjustment on the seat, there is a, what looks like a six millimeter Allen underneath. You loosen that, mine's actually stripped for some reason, but I don't have to even tweak with that. It's right where it should be for me. Snug down the 2.5 millimeter on the controls clamp. And what I just did is go over every nut and bolt on this entire bike. I didn't find any loose ones, but it's always a good idea to do that. I showed you how to charge the battery. This is the, the charge port for when the battery is installed. You see it uses the same port, but it's just a little uh, little cap there. And as I'm going over this bike, I'm thinking, man, I, I this is really nice build quality. Like, look at all of these welds on the aluminum heavy duty frame. I mean, this is just beautiful work. You got the mounts up here for an optional luggage rack in the future you can add. And yeah, overall, just really, really nice build quality. And I can't wait to take it for a ride. Don't forget to set your tire pressure too. The sidewalls say five to 30 PSI. I'm gonna set them up at 30. That way, all you gotta do is bring a pressure gauge with you when you go for a ride and drop them down if need be. These come with Kenda Crusades, puncture resistant tire casing. Woo, look at that center stand action. Let's try out the front forks. Oh, they feel nice. Now you do have adjustability right here. Just twist the dial. And if you go full clockwise, that locks them out, which I, I really like that they have a lockout feature on them. Don't forget to check your brake adjustments too. You see how I can squeeze this one down to the bar. You'll want to snug that. So you do have micro adjustments up here, but it's better to come right down at the caliper, loosen this hex and just pull that taut a little bit. You don't want to make them too tight, but how the other side is, you should be able to grab it with one finger, pull it as tight as you can and not be, uh, be hitting the bar as a, I guess a general rule of thumb. You got an adjustment right here you could use too, but those, those are kind of just micro adjustments. You set your main adjustment by loosening this, pulling the cable through. I love that it doesn't have hydraulic disc brakes because I always have problems with those and the, the mechanical linkage ones, it's just so much easier to adjust it, fix it and not have any issues yet. Next day, we're gonna do the full electric, no pedal assist range test. See, we got the green light for go, fully charged on the battery. And let's see if you flip this around. And as I showed you before you press this, it shows us green on the indicator. That means it's fully charged, shows. So anywhere from 60 to fully charged because yellow, if you press that means 40 to 60% power. You guys probably can't read this during GoPro. And then red on the battery means 40% or less. So it would be nice if it had a percentage indicator on there, but sometimes those aren't so precise. To put it on the bike, let's see if I can do this one hand, holding the camera, go ahead and slide her into place. Look at that, it clicked in automatically. Flip your key and that was, look at that action. I mean, that's, that's incredible. All right, let's hit the road. To turn the bike on, you simply hold the power button for, I guess it's seen about two or three seconds. We're fired up shows 1.6 miles i took this for a little spin around the block last night i had this on no pedal assist right now and i ran through all seven gears didn't have to make any adjustments and it runs through them all just fine so you could cruise around without power at all if you want to it actually pedals really nice so if you choose to pedal it like a regular bike even if you grab the half twist throttle right here uh, not going to do anything for you until you hit this positive you hit that once and you see we went to gear one now as i was pedaling it just kind of kicked in very abruptly actually uh so that's that's one thing i can say i mean it, i took it for one one mile ride last night and it's i mean as soon as you go to start pedaling 
it's it kind of jumps jumps in very quickly so you got to be ready you have five assist levels but if i leave it on number one i can basically effortlessly pedal doing 12 miles an hour it's not hard at all however if you grab the throttle now i got full power whenever i need it let's see what our top speed is going up this hill it's like a very slight little hill in the neighborhood uh, that brought us right up to 21 mile an hour no problem so you can cycle through this and run all the way up to number five power assist and then as you pedal it's got a lot more power and i mean you you effortlessly do 20 miles an hour however the one big flaw i'll say is when i'm pedaling watch this like i'm doing 20 if i stop pedaling it still goes for probably a solid almost second before it, it stops accelerating so without even doing a big ride i mean hopefully you guys can see this what i'm talking about if i pedal right now a little bit all right boom it's accelerating i stop you hear that you hear that delay so i, I don't really like the the delay from when you're pedaling it takes a solid second or two for the power assist to, to kill off and you guys would definitely notice that when you when you ride this now that being said if you're pedal assisting and then you go to ease on the brakes at any point it kills the power assist immediately so that's that's good if you leave it on pedal assist number one though you're not pedaling you're just using the, the throttle as i am with my right hand when you snap off it's instantaneous it takes a minute to kick on but see when i snap off it's it kills the motor immediately and then when i roll on it takes maybe like uh, that's probably about two seconds before the power assist is in, in full go so what we're going to do now is just hold this pinned with zero pedal assist unless i really need to somewhere uh and we're going to see how far it goes see what the range is i'm i just set the map my run on my phone as well so we're going from trenton possibly to asbury park beach we'll see that's about 47 miles i don't think it'll make it that far but uh we're we're gonna just hold it pinned and see how far we can go wish me luck and i highly suggest putting a helmet on would be the the safe bet don't be stupid like me wear a helmet We're showing 21.5 and GPS speed an actual 21 mile an hour. So it's nice to see a speedometer that's not exaggerated. motor cruising around up there ah he's having a good old time nice We're now over 20 miles in and things are going well. A few items I'd like to mention though. So as I was talking earlier, if you have this on gear zero, no power assist, I don't like that you can't use the throttle at all. You do have to throw it on number one. And as I, I kind of been trying to, I'm going to try to show you in the video here, but it's just not very natural feeling, we'll call it. See, as I start to pedal, I'm in gear four, power assist one. And as I start to go, there's nothing, nothing, no power assist. And then boom, it just kind of just, just rips off. And, and takes you going almost like full power but then of course slows down keeps you at that 10 11 mile an hour if i do the same thing but with power assist number five here's how that goes no power no power i'm pedaling just and then it just gets you going and it will bring you all the way up to 21 miles an hour so interestingly enough though even if i go to you know i leave it in gear number one it doesn't matter look we're doing we're holding 21 and all i have to do is keep these these pedals rotating as long as you don't stop rotating them for more than like a second or two if you stop and, and it, it just keeps you at this pace so uh even if i go to, all the way to gear one or gear seven it doesn't matter it keeps you here but that's actually become a good thing because in the first maybe 10 miles i was using no pedal at all and just holding this throttle and this your hand gets extremely tired so i kind of wish there was a cruise control function on this because if you try to hold this down for 10 15 minutes 
it's pretty stiff and you're gonna get a cramp holding this quarter or a half twist, whatever it is. That being said, I've been kind of alternating between using the hand throttle when I wanna stand on my feet, give my butt a rest, or, or just kind of pedaling like this, which I'm, I'm not actually giving it any power. I'm just keeping them rotating. And now something else worth noting is, I wish this had some, some top, top gears, like a 21 speed maybe, because yeah, the fastest I can get this going is really 25, 26 miles an hour. And to do that, you see how quick I'm pedaling to go? Well, actually, I get this on max speed. Oh, and there's my current speed. So as I give it all I got pedaling, there's 22, you know, 20, almost 23. I hit 27 before, but that was going down a hill. I mean, you're just pedaling so darn fast to get that. So you pretty much just settle on keeping the rotation going and holding that 21, which even after hitting a few slight inclines, it holds that speed no problem. And you see this, this power indicator. I don't know if you can see that, but it fluctuates from one bar to five bars and so when you hit a hill they'll go up to five bars letting you know that you're you're taking max power to do what you're doing and we're only about 24 miles in you can see we're down to two bars now so i'm not sure it's going to make it i did want to show you I, I have had the light on the whole time too you just press that once light goes on and off and actually dims the screen a little bit when you when you do that when you turn the light off it gets brighter so it thinks it's nighttime when it's on. This bike does have excellent geometry too. I uh, cracked open a cold beverage, just cruising along here. It stays straight, it turns well. It has swift and calculated control even when your hands are not on the bar is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Gas time, 489. Don't need none of that. I totally forgot to tell you about the bell too. Perfect. I'll be giving it a good durability test too. We'll get at least 100 rings. I'll let you know if it holds up. You see, the main problem with the gears not being high enough is I'm, I'm down to one bar and I'd really like to make it the, ne the last 15 miles. Of course, we're doing power only, but if I really wanted to, if you start pedaling trying to keep that 21 mile an hour because I'm kind of in a rush too, I, I can't really give it much power at all. So your only option is to really bump down the power assist to maybe level three, and then you can give it a good amount of thrust, but you're not doing, you're not doing 21 anymore. You're maybe gonna be doing you know, 16, 17, and then you're using leg power to keep it there. I would say on the flats that pedal assist number three is just a perfect blend of using power from your legs and the power from the motor. It's pretty easy to keep 16, but you're still working for it. We're now at the 40 mile mark. I think we started at 1.6, right? Yeah, so we're at 41.7 and she's getting ready to throw in the towel. I'm on power assist five, full throttle. Showing one bar on the battery, but it's, as you can see, it's just gradually slowing down. And that kind of just happened all of a sudden. It wasn't, I mean, it held that 21 mile an hour the entire time. And then in the last quarter mile started slowing down. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of pedal assist, see how this works out. Now well, that's pretty much it. All power assist is just about gone. I want to say give it a break, but it did stall right in front of this, like a biker bar kind of place, Tom's Tavern. Uh, I'd say it kind of blends in with all the Harleys sitting out front. So well, that was a friendly little place to stop in for a quick brew. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take the front wheel off the handlebars, pedals, because Jen is actually passing through. We're, we're going to be heading to Asbury Park, so I'm kind of on the way there. And we'll see if this fits in the Civic. There she is. The little two-door Civic. Look at that, fits like a glove. Can't beat it. So. And we made it to the beach. Not by full electric power, but we made it. Oh, no. Why? Why is the water, is this the end of the world? What is this? Gus, where are you going? <laughs> Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> you burrowing? <laughs> Next day, and I'm ready to close this out, give you some final thoughts. I did go ahead and take it around the block, went maybe a quarter mile before it was down to doing only three, four miles an hour. So this battery is definitely toasted. It needs to be charged up is all, but when you press this button, it's still showing green. It's actually more like a green yellow. So I'm gonna say that indicator is not working properly. So I will go ahead and plug this in and I'll let you know right here how many hours that takes to fully charge. I know this video had a ton of talking in it and I apologize if it got a little boring for you. This is kind of just an information video giving you all my thoughts uh, on this bike. Uh, something I didn't mention yesterday is this chain. No problems with it, but when you're going over bumps, 
it kind of is making that jingle noise and that's just it hitting this chain guard right here. So nothing to be alarmed or worried about. The front suspension handle all the bumps and rough roads with ease. I like that it's a hard tail. One less thing to worry about and gives you a nice rigid ride. I did hit a few inclines on this and it had no problem keeping that 21 miles an hour. But there will be future videos where I take this on other adventures and really put it to a much more uh, enduring test. A few other things I'd like to mention. I love that this comes factory with the rack. Of course, you can get a bigger one too, but that really gets the job done. The 16 inch wheels made it really easy to put this in the back of a, the Civic. Of course, I popped the front one off and folded the bars down, but it still fit right in there. I love the fact that it comes with a brake light, headlight. However, I do wish it came with maybe a cup holder, a cell phone holder, and a few of the other necessary accessories on a bicycle. The bell is a nice touch though. And even though we didn't get the advertised 60 to 80 mile range out of it, I was thoroughly impressed with the 40 miles under full electric power, especially being six foot two, 185 pounds. No doubt in my mind that if I was pedaling, keeping it around 16 miles an hour, we could have easily got 60, 70, maybe even 80 miles out of it. I'll have to find out in the future for sure though. Throughout the video, I've mentioned a few things that could maybe use improvement, but overall, I am thoroughly impressed with this. And I think for the average person that buys this bike, you're gonna be just thoroughly impressed as well. It's, uh, it's got a lot of bang for the buck. A 40 mile range is double anything else I already have, including the Varla scooter that I only get about maybe 20 miles out of it. So this is, this is a solid electric bike and I give it a giant thumbs up. I'll drop a link to it down below if you wanna buy one. And otherwise, I just wanna thank you very much for checking this video out. Hopefully the information was helpful to you if you're in the market for a Himaway big dog. And I know we didn't go over every little feature function, but covered majority of it and that's my honest opinion i love it it's great i'm gonna ride the heck out of it and like usual at the end of the video i'm gonna flip through the owner's manual you can just pause it and you know zoom in if you need to see any of this kind of stuff hopefully it does it justice i'll try to just i guess show you the the important pages um i'm gonna kind of rush through it because it's it's a pretty long manual actually here's your dimensions there you go again Keep saying it, but you can just pause to view all your specs right there. And then this is the assembly guide. This camera's hopefully getting a decent image of it. All the torque specs. This is the Galaxy S22 I'm using right now. So if it looks crummy, that's why. Let me just be quiet. Sorry about that. Seat adjustment, pretty self-explanatory. Just kind of flying through this. It's weird, the, uh, on my phone, the letters look a little weird, kind of blurry. Like it's trying to transform them or something. So, if it didn't come out good, it didn't come out good. It's putting like, like beauty on the, uh, on the font. Blurring, like blurring the lines on your face, you know? That's what it seems like it could be doing. I don't have beauty face on, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Synthesized camera. I'm just going to keep rambling, guys. Sorry. Probably should have just taken a picture of each page and threw them all up like that. Of course, that's more work. Than this. We are almost there. I mean, a lot of this is just super self explanatory. And I probably just showed you a few pages and it would have been fine, but you know, some of you guys might not have this manual. I don't know if they have this online. I'm, I'm guessing they probably do. Got flies going on my legs. Pedal assist, throttle only, pedal only, riding limitations, parking and transport, carrying loads and cargo.
And that's it. This is your new Himaway Cruiser e-bike. Let's start assembling. Take the accessory box out of the package and make sure it contains those components. Find the keys located on the saddle and remove them. Use the key to unlock the battery. Remove the battery to avoid damage to the battery during installation. Check the battery status. Safe way to charge your battery. First, assemble the charger and insert the plug into the transformer. Then, insert the DC plug of the charger into the battery charging socket. Last, connect the power plug to the power socket. Handlebar installation. Rotate the front fork so that the bar for installing the front light is facing forward. Loosen the bolts on your bike stem. Center your handlebars and rotate them to align to the marking pointed to. Tighten the bolts in the order to the handlebar stem, but don't tighten completely as you may want to further adjust the angle later to align more precisely. Tail light and rear rack installation. Secure the tail light and tighten the nut with your hex wrench. Remove the four screws from the frame. Align the bolt holes of both your rear rack with the hole on the seat stay. Then, reinsert the bolt through all holes and tighten the bolt with a hex wrench. Use zip ties to fix the tail light wire to the frame. Front wheel installation. Carefully flip your bike upside down for the front wheel installation. Remove the front fork's protection bar and the plastic axle guards. Align the fork dropouts with the axle of the wheel hub, making sure the dropouts are fully seated on the axle. Remove the thumb nut and one of the cone springs. Insert the quick release skewer through the hub. Tighten the thumb nut and then use the palm of your hand to close the quick release lever. Pedals installation. Please note, Indicators for the right pedal, R, and left pedal, L, can be found in two places. The stickers on the plastic cover and the bottom of the pedal threads. Start threading the pedal and rotating in the direction of the pointer shown on the crank. Headlight and fenders installation. Please note, if you prefer not to have a front fender, you may install the front light by itself. Use the bolt and washer to fix the headlight in the frame. You can find the bolt extractor inside the tool. Tighten the bolt with your 10 mm wrench. Please note, pay careful attention to the arrows on the wire connectors, making sure the arrows align with each other to avoid damaging the interior circuitry. Connect the light wire connectors together. This is the spare bracket. Tighten the bolts, attaching the front fork to the hub.
seat and suspension fork adjustment. Please note, do not extend the seat post beyond the minimum insertion marking etched onto the seat post. Adjust the seat post height by sliding the seat post up or down to a height. Find the lockout knob on the right side of the fork. Adjust the suspension fork by turning the lockout knob. Brake disc guard installation. Remove the bolts on the chainstay. Put the bolts through the disc brake guard, then tighten bolts. Before writing. This is your battery serial number. Write down the battery serial number inside the front cover of this manual to facilitate failure reporting.
everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and this is the Himaway Cobra. It's a brand new full suspension electric fat bike from Himaway, a brand that's made a reputation for itself building long distance electric fat bikes. We've brought the Cobra out to its natural habitat in the desert in southern Utah. I'm going to put it through its paces today to see how it performs in the real world, so stick with us. So obviously the most notable thing about the new Himaway Cobra is that it's a full suspension electric fat bike, which is a departure from the hardtails that Himaway usually produces. And I have to be honest, when I saw this bike released on Black Friday of 2021, I was fairly skeptical of how it was going to perform. And that's for a couple of reasons, mainly because Himaway has no experience building full suspension electric fat bikes. And secondly, it's still at a very affordable price point. And quite frankly, Affordable full suspensions aren't known for their performance. Full suspension e-bikes, this linkage, this four bar linkage, which is on this bike, is actually a fairly complex piece of engineering. And in order to make it so that it's stiff enough laterally so the bike doesn't feel wallowy in corners and over rough terrain, but still has compliance vertically so that that rear suspension is still working, that's a really hard thing to pull off, especially on a budget. So. I have to be honest, I'm fairly surprised right now to be saying that I'm really pleased with how this bike has performed. It still falls short of that mountain bike benchmark. That's mostly because it still is a rear hub driven bike. It's got a 750 watt rear hub motor. And frankly, it's just a bit of a beast. It's heavy, it's very large. We'll get a little bit more into the kind of the overall size of this bike in a second, but it's still a little bit unwieldy in tighter terrain, but we're out here in a lot of double track. We've seen a lot of mud today out here testing this bike, and it's done really, really well. Like all the rest of Himaway's bikes, it's a class three e-bike with a 750 watt rear hub motor. This rear hub motor has been rear, excuse me, redesigned from the old Himaway Cruiser. It still is a similar setup, but Himaway says this one can dissipate heat better and it now makes 86 Newton meters of torque. Hidden inside the frame, which is also a new thing for Himaway, is a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery, which is large. Again, Himaway is known for building long range electric fat bikes, and this one still is a fairly long range bike. The brakes are handled by a set of hydraulic Tektro brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. This is also, again, another improvement over the old Himaway Cruiser, which used mechanical disc brakes. The hydraulic brakes do grab harder. They're a little bit more modulation. They just feel better in off-road terrain. You also get an RST guide front fork and a rear shock, which I'm just gonna look at the side. It's an X-form shock. It's not something that I'm personally familiar with. I have a fairly long background in mountain biking, and this is definitely a more affordable shock. And I guess now we'll, let's just talk about the suspension a little bit because that's obviously the big thing that's new and fancy about this bike. So something I'm pleased about is how well the suspension actually works. That rear linkage, it's a four bar linkage, is actually functional. It does soak up bumps, especially on the testing that we've done on bike paths. Going through like a drainage culvert where you G out for a second and on a hardtail, your back would pack up, you'd kind of go down into the seat. This one soaks that up really nice. Out here, keep in mind if you do take this out onto an off-road or a double track type, st type style of riding, this is still very affordable suspension. There is a Himaway Cobra Pro, which is far more expensive this, than this bike, and it actually has a mid-drive motor that has a nicer suspension setup. This is still a fairly budget suspension, so you're not gonna get things like small bump compliance and rebound adjustment and compression adjustment, but it does get the job done out here on these double track roads that do at times get fairly rough. Frame-wise, the Himaway Cobra is a very large bike. Specifically, it's very long. Compared to other bikes that it competes with in this fat tire 750 watt class, like the Rad Power Bikes Rad Rover 6 Plus and the Event and Adventure, we're looking at four to six inches longer than either of those bikes, especially the Adventure. It's also fairly tall. It's 32 inch standover height. That's again, several inches taller than the Rover or the, the Adventure. 
So it's not gonna be a bike that's super friendly to smaller people. I'm six foot one, I have a lot of experience handling bikes, especially heavier, bigger e-bikes. This one has thrown me off a couple of times just simply trying to hold it and wield it around, turn it around in the bike path. It's just easy to get it to tip over. So bear in mind, if you're a smaller person looking at this bike, it might be wiser to choose a different one. But if you're a larger person like myself, it should work just fine. Cockpit wise, you've got Himaway's standard display. You've got a twist throttle on the side, and then you've got this comfort seat as well. It's all super comfortable. It's a well spec e-bike, and we're pleasantly surprised by how well it's performed so far in our testing. So to get an idea of how well the Cobra comes to a stop, we're gonna put it through a braking test where we bring it up to 20 miles an hour and slam on the brakes as hard as we can and take the average of that, getting an average braking distance. This bike comes with a set of tetro, tetro hydraulic disc brakes and 4.8 inch wide tires, so it's probably gonna to come to a stop fairly quickly, but let's put it to the test and see how it goes. So the Cobra came to a stop on average in 17 feet and nine inches, which isn't quite our average of all the bikes we've brake tested, but it's still pretty good. Keep in mind, this is an extremely heavy e-bike and those Tektro hydraulic disc brakes are just two pistons as opposed to the more powerful four piston brakes. So that could be contributing to it just ever so slightly. But overall, a really nice braking performance from the Cobra it come to, it came to a stop in a very safe and very effective distance. So good job. So Himaway built its reputation off of long range electric fat bikes and the Cobra is no different. It's got a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery that's now hidden inside the frame. That hidden battery is a, another improvement that we're seeing over the old Himaway Cruiser, which had a battery mounted on the outside of the frame. This one is removable and it tucks into the down tube. But that 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery, to get an idea of how far it can go in a single charge, we did two different range tests. The first on PAS5, the bike's highest pedal assist setting, and then on PAS2, the second highest pedal assist setting. And in PAS5, the bike went for 36.37 miles before dying. And then on PAS2, it went for 65.06 miles before dying. So really great result from this bike that is frankly, further than some of the other bikes in this category, which is something we've come to expect of Himaway. So more great battery range from this company that's known exactly for that. So in addition to a long battery life, Himaway has also earned a reputation, at least among the Electric Bike Report staff, for raw and unbridled power from its 750 watt motor. And again, the Cobra is no departure from that rule. This bike is fast, it leaps off the line very quickly, it's incredibly torquey. There is a lot of motor going on with the Himaway Cobra. Keep that in mind if you're looking for a bike that might be a little bit mellower. So you may still want power, but you don't want to feel like it can get away from you easily. This might not be the bike for you, but if you are looking for that, if you are maybe experienced with e-bikes, this thing has a lot to offer. But there is a lot more to say about this motor than just how fast it is. One of the major changes that we're seeing on this bike from Himaway's old bikes is it is controlled by a torque sensor. So what that does is it picks up how hard you're pedaling, not just if you're pedaling or not. What that does is it makes the motor incredibly responsive to what your legs are doing, and it makes it feel actually a little bit more like a traditional bicycle. It's one of the reasons why the Cobra actually does well off-road, even though it still has a rear hub motor versus a mid drive is that you can really fine tune the amount of power that you're getting out of the rear motor. But right about here in a typical review is where I would be referencing some sort of complaint about the different PAS levels. Usually on a bike like this that's rear hub motor driven, it's got five different pedal assist levels, we're usually finding that PAS 1, 2, and maybe even 3 give so little power that they're just not usable. That is absolutely not the case with the Himaway Cobra. We're actually seeing like a full paradigm shift from unusable low PAS levels. In fact, PAS one on this bike is almost too fast. 
So in our circuit test, we took this bike on a lap with no help from the motor at all. And it did about a 12 mile an hour average, which is to be expected. It's a heavy electric fat bike with full suspension. It's not gonna pedal very well without help from the motor. But once we kicked it up from PAS1, we jumped six miles an hour to an 18 mile an hour average, which is the fastest PAS1 lap we've ever put around our circuit test. It was almost too much. Uh, we really wanna see a bike that has five different pedal assist levels that really give the consumer power to adjust how, or the ability to manipulate how much power the motor is giving at any given time. This bike, we're not really seeing that. We're seeing five pedal assist levels that are all kind of clumped together on the upper end of the spectrum. So this is a class three bike, it's very quick. We did see a lap at on PAS5 going around our circuit that was very, very quick but they're all very, very quick. So something to keep in mind about this is it's also a, a very new bike. We got this right after it was released. So Hemaway might be doing some adjustments on the settings, but just be aware that the stock pedal assist settings on this bike are extremely fast, but that's a relatively small gripe. We think people that are gonna be buying the Hemaway Cobra are gonna be very excited about the amount of power it has and probably aren't even gonna be thinking about PAS 1, 2, and 3. It's gonna be all about PAS 5. So on the Cobra's cockpit, you've got a fairly standard electric bike cockpit, especially among Himaways. You have a Shimano Turney seven speed shifter. It's an overbar shifter. You control it with your thumb and that shifter is operating a seven speed Shimano Altus rear derailleur. Again, that's something that we're very familiar with and we expect from Himaways. All the Himaways so far that we've tested have come with that setup. You have a set of mountain bike style riser bars, a twist throttle, throttle on the right hand side, a uh, set of Tektro hydraulic disc brake levers that are nice and ergonomic. But one thing that has become a hallmark of Himaway are these leather stitched ergonomic grips. Now on bikes that are more geared towards bike paths and commuting and not so much of an off-road persona, these grips work just fine. But I will personally say that if I bought this bike, they would be the very first thing I changed because this bike is made for a little bit more of an off-road riding quality. And these things twist. So you can actually grab them and just move them up and down. That's not super friendly to uh, riding over rough terrain. You don't want your wrists moving unexpectedly. So I would highly suggest going and swapping those grips out. I'd also highly su suggest that Hemaway just not use these on a, such an off-road bike in the future. Your saddle is just a comfort saddle. It is very comfortable. It'll work for most people. And ride quality wise, the Hemaway is a very comfortable bike. If you're looking at more of uh, pavement commuting, of bike path ride riding, and maybe light dirt road riding, this thing is an absolute Cadillac. That full suspension system is going to soak up speed bumps, drainage culverts, potholes, whatever you can throw at it. And then on dirt roads, it's going to handle rocks and ruts and various things, kind of up to like maybe a smallish medium size. When you get into more technical terrain, the bike's sheer size is what starts to come and stand out. It is a nice handling bike. The steering feels a little bit slow. That's partially due to the fact that it's got a slacker head tube angle and then these really big 4.8 inch CST tires just makes for some slower handling, but it's nothing that you don't get used to very quickly. And then as I mentioned before, the suspension setup on this bike, it is functional. It does work and it does feel stable and stiff, but you are getting more of a budget ended shock and fork. So you're not gonna get a ton of small bunk compliance. You're definitely gonna feel harder chatter at high speeds. You're gonna feel square edge bumps on dirt roads and things like that. There is a pro version of this bike that comes with a mid drive and an upgraded suspension system. We're very curious to see how that thing performs off-road, probably performs a little bit better and makes up for some of these shortcomings on the cheaper bike. But all in, this is a really big step forward for him away in a true off-road sense. This thing handles these dirt roads and all the mud we've been through really, really well. So to get an idea of how well the Himaway Cobra goes uphill, we've brought it out to our test hill hellhole. Now, usually in this segment, I'm asking the question of whether or not this bike is going to make it up our test hill, considering it's a third of a mile long, 12% gradient on average, it's very, very steep and relatively long. But I have no questions on whether or not the Cobra is going to clear this hill. Himaways are traditionally known to be very powerful, and this bike is no exception. I think it's gonna climb the hill very, very well. 
It's more of a question of how quickly it's going to go. And again, I have high expectations. So let's see how the Cobra goes up Hellhole. All right. So this is the throttle only test for the Himaway Cobra. 